What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys MongoDB. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys MongoDB and it is a open source document style database that's used for a lot of new web applications. And it's classified as a NoSQL database because it does not rely on the traditional uh, table style databases or relational databases uh, that you're used to seeing with uh, MySQL and Microsoft SQL, you know, all the table based relational databases. And just to explain the difference, it kind of uses a document style way of storing data that's in the JSON format. It's similar to the JSON format. Uh, and if you're a programmer and you've used Python, then you obviously probably have heard of JSON files that you can use to query things using your code. And it's basically a database and it kind of stores, stores it in a document style structure. And so today I wanted to go through MongoDB, just basically give you guys an overview of what it actually is, and then show you guys how to install it on Ubuntu 20.04. Now let's go down and go over to their website so I can show you guys a little bit more about it. Okay, cool. So I'm at MongoDB's website. And of course I'll put the link down in the description of the video, but it's MongoDB.com. And as you can see right here on the main page, it says MongoDB, the application data platform, accelerate development, address diverse data sets and adapt quickly to change with a proven application data platform built around the database most wanted by developers for years running. And as you can see, it's a free and open source uh, software you can download and install this thing for free and you can actually use it on your own system without any type of licensing fees and all that stuff and I'll I'll show you guys a little bit more uh, but if you get into the enterprise level I believe there is some pricing for running it at an enterprise level but just to read a little more right here, it says the database for modern applications, MongoDB document data model naturally supports JSON and expressive query language and is simple for developers to learn and use. Functionality such as automatic failover, horizontal scaling, and the ability to assign data to a location are built in. And as you can see right here, it says flexibility and intuitive data model, uh, data as codes, unlimited scalability. So that's one cool thing about it. It says modern your data infrastructure, uh, radically simplify your data infrastructure with an application data platform that powers your transactional search, mobile and real time analytics workloads on any cloud. So that lets you know you can actually use it in the cloud. Uh, you can, you know, spin up a Google server and install MongoDB on it. And there you go. You have a data store for all your data or an Amazon, you know, web service server or one of their uh, buckets. You can install MongoDB and run it on there. But it says uh, powering mission, mission critical applications and systems for global organizations like Sega, Envision, Google, uh, EA, Squarespace, and Verizon. So it says the most intuitive way to work with the data generated by today's applications. And this is an example of how you actually use it. And if you guys have seen me talk about Python in the past, I've shown you guys JSON. That's basically what it looks like. That's the format of a JSON file or document. And then it also says uh, work with data as a code. I'm gonna just click on that so you guys can see uh, what it actually, how it actually uh, works. Uh, so as you can see, you know, database uh, dot users dot find and this is kind of easy to understand because I understand databases but you're looking for th this column with this zip code from what it looks like and uh, we can't see the rest of the data I can't skip over to the rest of the data 
or move it over let me actually make it a little bigger well now nah, I'm not gonna make it bigger but yeah that information is on there as well uh, address dot zip and you can find that zip it's probably over here to the right like I stated and it's looking it's giving you the results for that zip code right there so that's the way it kind of works and then also support complex uh, requirements so this is an example of transaction for what it looks like a transaction uh, in I don't understand this code it says 4x so I'm assuming that's a loop um, database updates um, yeah and I, I don't have time to figure out exactly what this is doing but it's uh, it's probably not a loop but it's saying 4x so whatever X is um, then it's searching for it I'm assuming and updating I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure but anyway that's the way that's a complex you know uh, script that you you're writing right there um, in Python that'll allow you to search the data so just wanted to show you guys an example but they have a lot of documentation from what I've seen uh, it says learn with MongoDB right here and then technical documentation so if you need documentation and then developers community so you can go in there and actually get more help if needed and here's some information about the cloud and I won't go through all this stuff, but they have mobile app development, you know, native data visualization. Well, this is pretty much all what you can do with the data once you have it in that format and accessible to your applications. And then we scroll down a little further. It's got a little bit more stuff, but let's go back up to the top and let's look at the pricing. I just wanted to look at the pricing right fast so you guys can kind of see uh, MongoDB Atlas uh, is free uh, for teams learning Mongo and developing small applications and then it goes up from there depending on if you're using their cloud platform you can run everything from the cloud um, and then on premise locally you can install it you know what I'm saying they I think they have some commercial licensing but um, for our purpose you can use it uh, totally free on a server that you have on prem and then uh realm this is app de development service so they do have some services or whatever for that type of stuff um now let's go on and hop over to my server so we can go on and install mongodb right fast okay cool so i'm logged into my ubuntu 20.04 and i just wanted to talk about a few of the prerequisites uh the first thing um, Ubuntu server does have well their repositories it does have a stable version of MongoDB but I'm gonna show you guys how to install the most current version of MongoDB by installing their repository uh, you know the first thing you have to do is add a key and then install a repository um, to the sources list and then we can go ahead on and install mongodb directly from their repository that way we'll have the latest and greatest version of mongodb so that's the best that's the way i'm gonna do it and that's the way i recommend you guys do it you can use the one that's already in the ubuntu repository but i recommend you do it this way so let's go on and uh start off by installing the gpg key uh, and I'm gonna copy and paste these commands and just like the last video uh, all the commands were in the description of the video uh, so I'm gonna paste them in here uh, the, the first one is basically adding that key like I was stating uh, and it's basically a curl the curl command uh, a couple options uh, dash F lowercase s uh, capital S capital L I don't know those off the top of my head but that should download that key. install it on your server so it can be used or so you can add that repository now let's go down and uh, type in our pseudo passwords and boom so we're good to go we added that key now we're good to go and one thing i've always done uh i just kind of skipped past this part and x add the sources list well i just wanted to show you right fast uh because i do this a lot but it's a way to actually double check that the key was actually added and the command for that is apt dash key and then space list. And this will list out all the keys that are added. And let's see if we can find that Mongo one. 
uh and as you can see it's the first one right there so that's the key uh and and you can see the expiration date for it it expires uh 2024 you know and that's the information on it so let's go down and uh clear the screen and go down and add the repository to our sources list and let's go down and paste it in there um I'm going to paste it in there and I'm going to just walk you guys through what, what's actually being done. So echo, you know, that dev, uh, and this is the repo that we're adding and we're pushing that to the sources list. Uh, it's actually creating a file called mongodb-org-4.4.list. Uh, and that allows you to add that to the sources list. Now, since we did that, let's go on and uh, refresh the repositories on this server. Uh, so we can type sudo apt update and run through that. And then you'll also see that it's hitting the MongoDB repository as well. Uh, you can see it right there, repo.mongodb.org. So it is hitting that repository that we wanted to hit. So everything is added properly to the system. Now we can go on and install MongoDB. And the command to do that is simply sudo uh, apt install. And then the package name is mongodb-org. Uh, so org, like organization, uh, and press enter. And that'll install it. So we can just press Y for yes to accept the amount of space that it's going to take up and then it'll go through the install process and i'll be back when this actually finishes okay cool so the installation is done and we have a mongodb server now the first thing you want to do is actually start the server uh because most likely it didn't start it uh right away i'm 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 sure of that so what you want to do is type sudo system ctl and then start and then the command to store that I'm gonna just type M O G M O N and then tab it out. But that is the service right there. So M O N God dot service. So let's go down and press enter and that'll store MongoDB. And as you can see, we didn't get any errors. So that means it was installed successfully and was able to store up on the server. So now we have a Mongo, a working MongoDB server. Now, the next thing you want to do is kind of check the status of it. So I'm going to just hit the up arrow and type status right here. And I'm misspelling this, but status, uh, press enter. And then that'll that'll show us all the information about it. Uh, so as you can see, the service is actually started, is active and running. But one thing you'll see right here is it's disabled. So what we want to do is enable it. That way, every time you start up the server, MongoDB or in start or start up at boot. So let's go on and uh, do that now. So all we have to do is type that same command, sudo systemctl, and then let's backspace this off and type enable and press enter, and that'll enable the service. And basically all it's doing is creating a symbolic link from the location of the actual service uh, to and adding it to the system, the service, so it'll store it up during boot. Now we're good to go on that. Now, the next thing I want to do is kind of test the server a little bit just by running one command right fast. So we're going to type Mongo space uh, dash dash eval and then um, the single quotes and then let's go DB dot run command and then open uh, parentheses and then open squiggly line, which is what I call it. And then let's put a space in there and let's go connection status colon space one and then let's put another space in there and then let's do the close squiggly lines and then the close parentheses and then we have to put the uh single quote up there again and that should run it right fast and that'll run that command for us right fast so it's kind of evaluating the system and i must have typed something wrong in there and yes i did i put an a in where it's supposed to be a o so mongo uh boom let's type that in good to go and one thing that it will return is this okay one uh, right here this just basically lets you know that the server is working properly by running this command it's basically a status command it's looking for that one and when it returns it uh, you'll see that the server is actually working properly 
and then also you know you can kind of see this version as i was saying uh we wanted to add it from the mongodb database or the mongodb uh website or their repository so we can have the latest version i believe the most stable version in the debian uh repository is like three something i'm not 100 percent sure but i know the current version for mongodb on their website is 4.4.6 so we do have that current version of mongodb and that's pretty much all i wanted to show you guys uh it'll be kind of hard for me to actually show you connecting to this thing uh because i will have to have some data loaded in there which i don't have currently uh i'll go in on it and set up some data and add it to this actual uh database and that way we can have something to play around with i didn't and want to go through that so i'm gonna do a part two of this video and that way we can go through and i can show you guys how to actually pull things into some python code or something uh connecting to this actual server but i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel i want to keep doing videos on free and open source software and things that you can install on linux that are being used within the it industry now uh it's like bleeding edge technology that's coming out and i kind of want to stay on top of it and just at least show you guys how to actually get it and start playing around with it in your personal lab environment so you can get familiar with it and start getting yourself prepared for the workforce once once you get into it uh, by having and adding things like this to your resume but hope you guys enjoyed the video again and i hope you guys have a good evening and keep it techie